Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to vlog 1HO, Authentic Industry Partnerships. Now in international higher education there are a lot of cliches that permeate our lived existence at the moment and one of them is about industry partnerships, it's about impact and engagement, it's about transferable skills, transferable knowledge. Now my fear is a hell of a lot of cliches are packed into those phrases and ideas and I think we're, we're losing some of the more meaningful connections and collaborations that we could be engaging with and for me what we're not talking about is authentic relationships and how we create meaning between our university and industry partners. And the other worry I have is that we endlessly talk about industry and I think it's narrowing what we think of as industry. Actually, the diversity of industries in our culture are profound, from theatre to maritime engineering, from publishing to teacher education, from social work to social policy. So what I want to do today is broaden out our understandings of what is industry. And in true hairy bikers fashion, Goodness. here are two that I prepared earlier. Greg Hancock has joined us today. He's just arrived from Sydney for DocFest. I am so thrilled to meet you properly, finally, because you're a legend. And get ready for this career. I mean, this career is stellar. For our students out there, all our friends around the world watching these vlogs, this man is a legend and his career is incisive about the innovation and diversity of what work is now, I think. You completed a Bachelor of Music Education from the Conservatorium. We'll get to that shortly. He's also the owner and the director of Sydney Props Studios, which is a business that I'm just filled with enthusiasm about and for, but also the general man manager of Interparticle, Intelliparticle, Intelliparticle. Now that business is incredibly important to us today. And I think probably we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about that business, but if we have a definition of entrepreneurship, which is very important to our students, then I think here, he sits. There's a lot of business partnerships that we talk about in universities at the moment and there's the array of businesses that we'll talk about but I think you and the diversity of the businesses that you're working at the moment are incredibly important to us. As you can see my second guest is a gentleman that's quite well known to many of you, Professor Jamie Quinton. Hello. Professor of Physics, Professor of Nanotechnology, a gentleman I know via an accident of marriage. I cannot convey to you how many requests I have received to bring Jamie into this conversation. And look, when we heard that Greg was coming and joining us today, I thought this was the great time to do this. So Greg, look, let's start with you in this incredible career. So from your Bachelor of Music, now I'll get the dates right, so mm. tell me if I'm making an error here. So you graduated in 1982, that's not even possible, darling, yes, but you graduated in 1982, and then you went on to form Sydney Prop Studio in December 1986. Mm. So where did you get that impulse, that propulsion to form that business? Where did that come from so soon after your graduation? Yeah, that one is part of a, a series of businesses. I started as a musician, so I had corporate bands, we did band agencies, we had, um, then we started Sydney Props, which was just a prop hire, then we did a company called Directions Conference and City Manager, which is still running, and then I ran a real estate agency and done all sorts of wonderful things, and I call them experiments. To me, now, the, in, the way I interpret it in my current vocation, is they're all experiments, they're trialling. There's many, many disasters. I can tell you all the disasters, probably more disasters than were successes, but the successful ones are still running. And they've all got managers over them. So um, the, the concept of experimenting, trying a new thing, getting an idea and seeing it through, that's, that's what I've done. And I mean, surely there's a personal drive there for you as well. I can't do it unless I'm having fun. That's and, the bus. That's and the bottom line. See, that's remarkable to me. So you graduated from this remarkable, fabulous degree, mm. and then within four years, these businesses and these ideas and these experiments mm. started to emerge. There's a lot of courage there, though. Mm. Do you feel that in yourself? Oh, absolutely. Now, every time someone says you you shouldn't do this, you can't do that. Don't open photo studios; it won't work. Don't even start a prop company in the first place. Um, yeah, it was all silly stuff that we just did. 
that as long as I was having fun, I could work 24 hours a day on it. So I think that's the big message for an entrepreneur is a bit of a, it's just hard work. If you get excited about something and you work at it, then you usually get, I don't ever work at things and not get a result in the end. And I think most people like that to stick with it. If you give up halfway, no worries, you go back. Can I tell you what I love about that, Greg? Yeah. Um, so on open day, mm. when the students come and they listen to me talking about our courses, mm. um, I have a conversation with them about why people should go to university. Mm. And I try to engender the notion that people go to university so ultimately they get paid to do something they enjoy. Mm. And you've just and given the whole embodiment of that and the successes that you've got from it have been entirely based on that notion. But it's not even about money, it's about spirit. I think if you, if you can't drive yourself into... Like I don't go to work, um, and Jamie's been in our workplace, it's a pretty wild space. It is. Um, I don't go there ever not wanting to go there. And I, I haven't been able to do that anywhere I work. So I take my hat off to someone that can go to a job and not like it and take a paycheck. I just couldn't do it. Mm. And I think science is a incredible the university is an incredible space because you've got all these very talented people and then plug it into commerce and need and off we go oh well see yeah. this this is it so this yeah. is this is that authenticity i want to talk mm. about today this is the relationships because i think the notion of this is university this is industry it's getting a bit awkward it feels mm. a bit forced and it doesn't have to be and therefore let's talk about IntelliParticle. Mm. i'm obsessed by this so this suddenly arrived in 2017 now, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because I'll give the example of saying what Jamie's been doing research for you in our own home. But, <laughs> but carbon graphite resistive heating. Now, yes. I'm fascinated and a bit obsessed by it. And I'm obsessed about how it's operating in inks mm. and in resin mm. and in fabric and in concrete. Mm. So, wow, where has this come from? And I'll just say I'm only laughing because whenever I put our griller on or our oven on, I see Jamie with his camera with taking his, pictures. Jamie, yeah. And I'm going, what, what are you doing, Dal? Why are you taking pictures of my griller? Oh, I'm doing it for Greg. <laughs> so so, so, so how, how did we get there? Where did this come from? Uh, it came to me just with a family friend that said that came in with what I call a pipe, or just a piece of wood with black paint on it. It was all covered up in a rag. And, and he had been going for quite some time. I think they started in 2014. But it was a big top secret, so uh, Paul Glackis brought it in, showed me the uh, the um, the pie warmer that we'll call it, which Jamie's experienced the pie warmer. It's just a bit of wood with two proper electrodes down the side, paint the middle and it heats up. So it's a resistive heat. The energy goes in because of our surface area, we're quite efficient with the um, with the energy produced that comes out. That, that's extraordinary. But so, so again, you, you've been very coy. You, mm. you recognised an idea, or a mate, a good friend. You had an, a great idea, well, it's and actually then you went Cole, with it. Cole Miller's the inventor. Cole put it on the leading edge of aircraft uh, back in the 90s in America for a military purpose. Um, and then Cole's, Cole and I work together every day. So I'm really just the entrepreneur, the face of the the business and Cole's the, the scientist and the inventor of the product. So but we've got it into glass. We've into yeah. you know really it's just a, a carbon graphite that can go in many different vehicles. So it can go into a, a rubber, we've got it into a, a flexible rubber membrane at the moment for under floor heating. We've got it into cooktops for um, into glass, into a glass frit, into yes. glass paste, we bake it on, you know with a lot of high temperatures so you can plug it in. Reaching you know quite high temperatures with that three hundred and fifty degrees at the moment. See, it's it's clearly brilliant to me. But how did you recognise it, mate? How did you go? Here's an idea. Let's go with this. H it's how do you make the go? Client, with it? Do client request. We started we started exhibiting. We went to national manufacturing exhibition. Right. We met uh, Flinders University, and we met um, I can't remember the chap's name. Colin. Colin. Fantastic. Yeah. Colin. Tom, Tom, sent Tom. out an email to. Um, all who was interested in this wacky idea that he found at the exhibition. <laughs> Jamie turned up at the meeting, there's just like three people there that, you know, people would have responded or not responded. Jamie saw a bit of merit, I think, from that point, or just have a look-see. And the rest is history. Absolutely remarkable. <laughs> and the next question I've got, again, might help our students and our friends around the world watching this. People often talk about the challenges of a startup, and it's, again, it's become a bit of a cliche mm. now. Mm. What are those challenges? I think the biggest challenge is crude, it's money, because without money you can't buy materials, you can't 
get patents done. You can't outsource even to universities or, or to other scientific help. Um, the patents are a big thing and there's lots of debate about should you patent things or shouldn't you, but even that is a business economic decision which you really should get legal advice, so it's money. Yeah. So um, we've gone down the, a big patent path since I joined, yeah. which forces you to go into the science and forces you to validate your science and, and it's, so, it's just a cost factor. No matter where you go to with that conversation, what's the hardest thing, it comes back to money. And then if you're just talking about the science, it comes back to passion, integrity, drive, um, just tenacity, hard work. You know, I think if you're starting up an in innovation, it can't, it's not a half-baked effort no matter what, you, what you're trying to do. It's got to be, um, it's got to be all, your, all your energy. It's got yeah. to come from a very strong place, otherwise you won't make it through. So what's amazing there is we've got the commercialisation elements, we need the money, but also there is then the authenticity element too, that the good science is required. So it, it's not just crass commercialisation, mm. it's keeping everything in balance and in flow. Oh yeah. yeah. Can I ask a follow up? Mm. Um, so from my point of view, I see it as the science plays a role, you want to make sure that you kind of optimise what you have. Mm. but would can you comment on the versatility and on being able to recognize all yeah. the different ways in which you can apply it? That's remarkable because yeah. I think that's certainly something I've got from yeah. my interaction with you and, mm. and Cole is your ability to connect it with other opportunities is, is a critical thing. Absolutely, I think what Cole brings to the story immediately is fast science. I've employed various different scientists and things, Cole does crude fast science that moves forward the innovation very quickly uh, and then we've what I've realized and what you've educated me what we've sort of worked cooperatively together is to validate the steps forward he's doing to research when there's an obstacle how do you go through it very clinically yeah. and with young Reese that worked with us a PhD student was fantastic Reese reviewed all our protocols for right from when you put something in the oven what what are you doing? Have you documented every step? Mm -hmm. And all that, all that science that Jamie and Reese brought to us, plugged in with Cole's, you know, innate ability with this these materials, uh, has really just moved us forward, like dramatically moved us forward. See, that's that's astounding, and that does lead into my next question. And you can answer it good or ill, mate. What, mm -hmm. what can a, a university give to you in your businesses? You know, what what can we do in a in a real way, in a productive way, and mm. where have we maybe as university colleagues fallen short in the past? I haven't really had that much to do with universities in in with the science start of things, but what it immediately brings to our company is the facility, just the pure facility to view something at a, at a microscopic level that you can't do with the equipment we have. So resources, material, and and personnel. Uh, it's also that spirit that Jamie especially brings to the story of, no, no, there's a warmth that someone like Cole and other inventors, I'm sure, are the same. They work isolated. They're like musicians a little bit. Piano yeah. players that play by themselves, you know. They don't interact a lot with peers. Get in, Cole. Well, Cole's, Cole's got me to bounce an idea, and I, you know, absorb it. As you know, I've sort of tried to escalate my science as much as I can. We won't talk about my <laughs> results in school and science. But with, it's very valuable for inventors and for commerce to have that real plug-in of real brains and eagles surrounding eagles as opposed to, I don't call myself a pigeon, but I say to Cole, I need to surround you by eagles, not pigeons, you know, because he can reflect off me, but he's only going to get what he's pushing out, which is often what good science is anyway. You talk to a peer you move forward because of that knowledge that you've based. Yeah. Now, Cole can only so get so far with me. Expertise. That's yeah. it. And that's it. And that's, and, but it's also good, you're doing, that. you're on the right path, guys. I mean, just that validation, once you, well, the very first time you came, Jamie, you're saying to us, oh, look, what you've done here is quite remarkable. Now, just that alone inspired Cole, just that one, one point. Now, he might have gone off and done all these different things that maybe went with thought where you was going to go, but that's inspired him mm. to continue. That's which great. Is, 
phenomenal. Because it is quite remarkable. Yeah. It, it is. So therefore, Jamie, let's bring you into this conversation. So what started this relationship with Greg and this concept and this startup? How, how did you two meet? It sounds a bit like a dating app, but how did you two, you two meet? Um, there, don't believe there was an app. <laughs> um, so, the, uh, so as Greg said, um, Colin Thomas from uh, the um, Innovation Hub. Yeah, the Innovation Hub at Tonsley, um, put the meeting together and I got an email from him that just basically talked about what the technology was about and because I have a background in my research career in carbon nanostructures and a very keen interest in carbon nanostructures, there was the thing that had been missing from my career which is, hey, there's an application that could use your expertise. So I went along to the meeting keen as because I was really interested in the applications um, and I hadn't really thought about the applications, you know, I was more, I was doing more fundamental science with these things just to understand them in a, in a fundamental way mm. and here you are doing really cool things with them um, and it's also, it also is a good match for my training and my background because um, I have done a fair bit of industry strategic research and, and targeted fundamental research um, in the past. So um, it was a natural thing for me to go. And then, of course, you, you bought your piece of wood with the pie paint warmer. on it. Yep. The pie warmer, yeah. Um, and real, uh, nothing beats a real demonstration. Mm. You know, you didn't do much, but you got a lot of results from it. Mm. And that, that was quite remarkable is the right word. Well, from that meeting, uh, the next day, like I met the guys on the... Monday, I think mm. it was, and then the next day they lined up interviews with Red Arc and with Electrolux the next day. So that plug-in of innovation, yeah. university and commerce, to me I've been struggling to make that link by myself um, without working with the university and that was a huge step forward, and, absolutely and, huge. And the amazing thing is you two actually really get on incredibly well too because when he he returns from seeing you he's like his face is smiling he's he's I excited he's energized Jamie's, Jamie's a, Jamie loves science and the passion you cannot you can see that from the first meeting I would say okay. the first meeting and Jamie has an inquiring mind and is very giving that's the big thing and I, I think you both are very giving in your spirit with with this type of thing which is not what you would expect from you but you, you sort of ask me what is the expectation from university. Mm. University, you think, is sort of hard science, is papers and analytical, and, and I think you guys bring some warmth to a university environment, so I think it's a great thing. And, and where I mm. come to this, I suppose, is, and this is where, you know, I'm hoping Australia buys into this, is we're here to serve. Mm. We're paid by the Australian taxpayers to use our research. We've had the great gift of higher education mm. to serve people and mm. provide pathways and alternatives and opportunities. I mean, mm. that's what I see our, our job as being. Oh, that's Absolutely. Fantastic. If we can propel Australian industries forward, mm. um, that provides automatic value to the university. That's mm. one of the purposes of a university, I would have thought. Well, there's a lot of... to connect with our... Mm. There's a lot of talk about government assisting, and I can be... Um, maybe we just haven't accessed it properly, and several people have tried for us, but innovation this is the heart of innovation in the university that's where the assistance really is yeah there's a rebate the a government rebate which is fantastic for your study and all your research work uh, it's a a fantastic thing going and asking for um, the you would think with a, a low energy product that we the government would be all over us they would grab us and they would say you cannot produce this outside Australia hook you up with this manufacturer, you must stay with them, they're Australian guys, we'll manufacture it here, and then we go to market, and after three or four years, after you've paid back all your fees through the way, um, that's what I would love to see happening, but that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. But the university has been remarkable. The, the spirit, that's what I'm, uh, yeah. you know, a startup like us, calling out for help, and we walk into a room like that, and we're given two, two Look, back up of science, back up of validation of our product, pat on the back and, and encouragement, as well as introduction to two key clients. Now, one of the companies, Red Arc, is a South Australian um, mm -hmm. company, and they've used us to making heat signature targets. That's been the first income for the company. I mean, they're lovely people to work with. 
and referred by you. So you couldn't get a more, and you, you probably didn't even know that, Dara, but that, it's amazing. That, that is a really genuine situation where you go, okay, you've got an innovation, a startup, you've got a university, you've got a, a directive to, hey, talk to these guys, and you've got a financial outcome, which then feeds back into, we can afford to come back and do some study with the university, and off we go. You know, that, that very simple little model, amazing. Well, we're about to for take... For every taxpayer. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and for, and for the taxpayers out there. Mm. Great. We're about to take you to an industry luncheon mm. with a series of people who can go through funding options to, to give you a series of rebates mm. to mm. build on the relationship with the university as well. So in one hour, you're probably about to see five or six different strategies mm. to bring money in and opportunities in for you. Now, it's not the, the dream of the suite or the portfolio of funding, mm. but there are ways, I think, that we can maybe move the business forward. Um, I was going to ask, sweetie, is there a, are you asking a question about the authentic relationship from the university side? Well, I'm, I'm going, to, going to come to that, but can I firstly ask the example from the pair of you? Because we've got an undergraduate student, an honours student currently involved in this story. Can you, can you tell us about what's happening there? So just starting with a student. Sure. So a student, um, Reese Walchowitz. Hi Reese. if Reece. you're watching. Um, I'm, I'm sure he'll be watching at some point. Um, Reese is an undergrad student. He's a student in our Science High Achievers program in third year. And as part of their program, they do research projects and it was a perfect opportunity and mm -hmm. uh, the initial conversation I had with him about what sorts of things he'd be interested in. Um, I mentioned the opportunities, there was an in industrial project that he could get his, his hands on mm -hmm. and um, he was quite keen. Um, and so we kind of started from there and it was kind of a little bit left field for him. So you know, he didn't have a background in nanotechnology for instance um, and so it was a sideways step for his um, skill set, mm. which was great because, I mean, that's what we want for our students. We want to actually broaden their experience and their skill set in what they do. So um, so he got involved. He did a la last semester project mm. um, with IntelliParticle. Yep, and he came to visit. He put hands on. I think the big thing that innovations like us, especially a sort of grungy startup like we are, Reese sees that energy, he sees the, there's a financial energy that we have to get this done because we have, we have to make this and there's a commitment, a passionate thing, which is very hard to artificially create in a university. Oh, so, well said, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's um, that interaction between the two of the two entities, both are gaining a lot. You know, I know we gained a lot, but I'm, I'm sure Reese would see the energy that Cole works at and the, the the mad science I of think the it's different um, way of approaching something, oh, a very yeah. literal, quick fix way, and then you work out, does that work? And then you back analyse it. I, it. I think it's great for a student to see um, a real industry with a real mm. world problem that needs to be addressed. You mm. know, you can't, with, with undergraduate teaching and learning, you learn about what other people have done. Mm. Um, he's had to actually think about trying to solve problems that haven't been solved before, and it's an experience that most students don't get. Even the students who are here mm -hmm. don't necessarily get an industrial project to work on. They'll go and join a research group and they'll work on something that's more blue sky than anything else. Yep. Whereas in your situation, in, in Reese's project, he was given challenges that really needed to be answered yep. and, and, and responded to promptly. Yep. And so... And then we implement them. That real Which, world experience yeah. is, is one of those graduate qualities that we want to engender in our students. We but do. It's, it's an opportunity that most people a don't And get. sort of mm. my, my dream is sort of the, the Dean of Graduate Research is to find a way to find a strategy so that Reese can continue this through honours and then into a doctoral program. So that's the funding matrix that I'm trying to find a way to put together now. Mm -hmm. So really this can be a proper industry university partnership and Reese can gain and so can all of us. Can I just give a quick plug for mm -hmm. STEM 3700 and say that hi Ingo. Ingo is uh, our topic coordinator of that topic and we are trying our best to embed that in our science programs so that while students can't necessarily each have an industry problem, there's a process now where in this topic we get industries to come and engage 
and provide a problem mm. and then the students within that topic are, are amassed in a team and with a multidisciplinary team they tackle the problems mm. so it's a it's a it's a de facto way of doing that mm. right um, I would argue that Reese had the real situation because he was interacting with you mm. um, when you would ask both of us for an answer I'd be thinking about the answer but I'd actually encourage Reese to to have a go first absolutely yeah. and, um, and the document he produced was yeah, his excellent. report was good. Yeah. And so therefore, well now just, Jamie, you can fold this back for us if you can. Mm -hmm. What can industry partnerships give to our universities and how do you as an academic render them meaningful? And I should probably say, before we got together, I read Jamie's PhD. I would, uh, no judgment, but, but I read his PhD and it is an outstanding PhD beautifully written, he's a magnificent writer, but the thing I would say to you is the PhD was about industry engagement, so you could see your interest and your passion in outreach within the PhD itself, so surface science was a way for you to make connections. So mm -hmm. where are you now on that story, because that was your PhD, what can universities do and what can we gain? Well I think the most important Point, and the first one that came to my mind as you mentioned the question is that I, from my interaction with multiple industries now, all of them have this perception that when the university engages they've got one hand in their pocket trying to pull money. Yeah. Now, I mean, that is, that is our KPIs, mm -hmm. right? So you know, I'll be completely upfront about that and say, look, our KPIs are driven by research income. Research income comes in lots of different forms. Industry money is a very lucrative and a very useful way for us to meet our KPIs. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, you know, impact and engagement is all about how can we help Australian industries in particular. And there's more than one way to go about this. So from a personal point of view, thank you for pointing out the spirit because that's why I do it. Mm -hmm. I do it because I enjoy it, mm -hmm. not because Oh, I can meet that KPI. And that's very I want, I yeah. want to meet the KPI. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. We all do. Yeah. But I want that to be a byproduct, a, a consequence An outcome. of yeah. what we do, yeah. not that's my motivation for getting involved. Mm. Yeah. And and that's really important to mention. Mm. And then the second thing is, you know, for someone like Greg who's starting up, I actually want you to be successful. I want to see your product everywhere. It's I want amazing. it in every house, right? Mm. Um, and I want to do my part to help that happen. Now, in terms of you know opportunities, I tell you what they are. That I'm not going to try and push you into something you don't want to do, mm. because you have to. That's your role in this. Your role is to decide what you need to do, when you need to do it, and my role is to support you as I can, mm. hoping that when the time comes that you do have a continual turnover and you know income, income stream, stream. Mm. you've got an opportunity to target some R and D, and then when that comes along. I've been involved as a, in a, in a re research partnership and in an actual relationship yep. rather than someone who's flying by night, come in, see an opportunity, go, oh, can I have a piece of that? Thanks. Mm. You know, mm. That's yeah. really important. No, I think um, that unison of the two entities is how that all happens. And I think that little model with, we, with the targets that we made really spells it out beautifully. There is an income stream at the end. It is a commercial exercise. However, the science is the focus and the, fi the science. If the science, if we weren't getting benefit from it, we wouldn't continue anyway. A very clear commercial yeah, life. Which you would, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to. So. Yeah. Yeah. But um, what I think you've both captured there is this is a long-term relationship. This mm. isn't, oh, there is money. And it's not about making it grubby or corporate mm, or any mm, of this. Mm. It's actually saying, look, we're in a business here. We we're, we're, we're doing business yeah. work and it is about money. But for us in the university, we have a multi-phasic relationship with mm. this. So it is an interest in the science, it is an interest in Australian industry, in commerce, in the staff you have, in ensuring that they are able to manage science and enjoy the science mm. and mm. science literacy and all these multiple variables. But there's got to be something real there. And I think that's why the relationship between the two of you I found really fascinating. And that mm. leads to my last question. What would you recommend to all our students out there, our colleagues, our friends out there, about making this relationship meaningful between universities and industry. What have maybe we've been doing wrong and what maybe can we do right? What, what are you learning through this partnership between you both? 
Yeah, I, I think um, I think Reese would have learnt a lot in that process. Oh, absolutely. We we definitely learnt a lot, and so moving forward, it's just more of that same thing. It's not a very good answer, is it? But no, no, it is. I, but it is incremental. Yeah, I think I think the the key point of going long term, especially with our product, there's so many applications for it in glass, in vinyl, in oh, yeah. in uh, you know. Well, the, reason, roads, the, the reasons in the inks interest me as well. I mean, yes, that's screenable, extraordinary. But the thing is, you you as a small startup, you can't move all those different projects forward mm. with any sort of order. So, the whole strategy with our company was to go to university and go, okay, we need, we want to start with this one, and then the next one, and the next one. So, mm. assuming that it all works famously and we get product in the market, which we're already sort of doing. Um, there's a cycle there. There's, there's, a, there's a long-term plan. And, and that's mm. remarkable. I love the incremental element mm. because, of course, that's mm. how we work in universities too. Here's a project, here's a mm. student, on, on, mm. on, on, on. You've got to constantly evaluate your viability, right, of each of these aspects, Absolutely. each of these applications. As a startup, if you don't do that, you go on. So let me tell you why I love working with IntelliParticle. Mm. It comes down to me being a physicist mm. um, and me wanting to make a difference outside of my lab. Mm. So I can spend hours and hours and hours thinking about what's happening on the surface of a piece of graphite. Mm. And we do that. We do experiments, we try and, you know, we, it's almost like creating new Lego blocks, if you think about it, right? That's one way to think about it. I want to understand what's going on. Mm. That is my passion. That is where my brain loves to spend its time. Mm. But you've automatically doubled the number of possibilities and doubled the meaning behind it because now it's not just we can understand this and this might be useful for this or that. You've actually got applications it's useful for and then it actually targets my thinking in a completely different way. Mm. Okay, here is an application. That's one application. It has certain requirements and it applies that fundamental knowledge. But you have to configure it in its own unique way for that particular application. Yep. And then you've got... 12 applications, mm. 12 different configurations, 12 different things, 12 different sets of challenges. Mm. And you might actually solve a challenge in one of them and it might automatically solve a challenge in one of the other ones. Absolutely. Yeah. So my maths brain loves that. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm thirsty. More, mm. more, more. Mm. You know, so um, that's why and I, and that, that's that's it. Why I yeah. want to get involved. It's driven from the science. I mean, yeah. there was no... If there was no step forward in the science, we wouldn't have anyone's imagination. There wouldn't be, there wouldn't be a commerce story at the end of it. But we, we definitely have, and to have that validated by the university, which you don't get unless you go back to a someone with Jamie's background and get that validation. So, startups, industry, innovation, all need to go to a university and get that external evaluation. Really, this makes me very very happy. Mm. Uh, not only are these two brilliant, innovative, interesting men, I think, a credit to the country, but I think the partnership, you know, the sum is greater than the parts here. And I think we've got a model for how industry-university partnerships can occur. And I think that's why I wanted to particularly capture this moment mm. in your history, mm. because I think in a year's time it's going to be in a different place, and in five years' time it's going to be in a different place. And I think it's great for students to see this is how it starts. One student doing a project, an interest, that iterative development. So it's not suddenly, you know, here's a million dollars, let's sign a patent. It's that lovely, incremental, gentle relationship that builds. Mm. So thank you so much for being here, mate. We're no, thrilled. Thank you. And we're going to hopefully find some new income streams for you in the next hour <laughs> or so that might build the relationship, I think, between the university and your businesses. And, um, you're a legend, Jamie. And on behalf of the university, um, thank you for being here. Oh, um, that's very nice. And uh, you, you're, an <laughs> <laughs> you're an absolute I legend. Do. And I think you really do represent the best of what entrepreneurship means in this country. That's very and, nice. and your entire career mm. is one of innovation and inspiration. Thank you very much. How exciting is this? Thank so you. I <laughs> wish you all love, light, and peace with these two very attractive men. We're out. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>